the meditation of God that proceeds without interruption like a constant stream of oil is colored by the favorable desire of the Lord's eternal associates to please him. And it will appear in the senses and the minds of the practicing devotees by the Lord's special grace. It becomes identical with the drop of love that dwells in the hearts of the living entities and it will attain a form of love according to the mood of the different associates of the Lord. Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. So this is the key. By strong meditation, deep meditation in dhyana, Sadaka is receiving the mood Vraja Loka Anusarata of devotees whom he is following, whose feelings he is following. And that brings him to the stage of pure love. And it is said, and will attain a form of love according to the mood of different associates of the Lord. And in Bhakti Prema Chandrika, Narutam Das Thakur is explaining very well what, how to do it. Whatever I practice and desire in my sadhana, in my practice, daily practice, in the moment of perfection, I will attain in my Siddha Deha. Beautiful. Beautiful. And this is the path of Raga Bhakti. Raga Patera. Without this following, it's not possible to attain the final goal of direct service, loving service of Yuga Lakishore. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so we should listen very, very careful, not jumping in different moods, but to follow Anantadas Babaji, how he is slowly, slowly developing our consciousness to first understand what does it mean, deep meditation, then a little bit from then by the mercy, only by Kripa, progress in the next stage, Dhruva Anusmriti, to be completely focused, and then finally, Prema Bhakti. So when we are listening, when we are reading, we have to be concentrated, not jumping over many things which mind present us, but try to follow the mood of commentary. Because this commentary will prepare us for the Lila.
We can continue. Rade, don't sleep. <laughs> With when sadhana bhakti ripens into bhava bhakti, the absorption of the consciousness in bhava turns into dhruvanu smriti. Yeah. You, see? you see, this is the gradual process. Sadhana bhakti has to ripen to bhava bhakti. And what is bhava bhakti? It's half ripen stage. But prema is fully ripen stage, and this is the reason why it is our goal. <coughs> Sadhana bhakti ripens into bhava bhakti, and absorption of consciousness in bhava. Consciousness must be completely absorbed in bhava. Then turns into Dhruva Anusmri. Completely focused. Chitta Vrit. And then relationship is strongly established through attachment. Very scientifically. Mary, maybe Gurudev, please help us. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> explain. Beautiful. No, I didn't explain anything. That is the realization of that. Right. Go on. This Dhruvanu Smriti or Rati can be gradually attained by a sadaka by hearing, chanting, and remembering the great loving devotion of the Lord. Eternal associate. <coughs> I'm sorry. Second time, in second sentences, Baba is speaking the same conclusion in opposite way. He's, in first sentence, he is saying, Sadhana Bhakti ripens into Baba and this kind of consciousness brings to Dhruva Smriti. From Sadhana to Bhava to Dhruva Smriti. And to confirm this, he is saying second sentence and say, to attain Dhruva Smriti, <laughs> or Rati, it can be possible that gradual by a sadaka that sadaka can attain by hearing listen hearing chanting and remembering what great loving devotion of lords eternal associates parshadas this is the path of raga listening, reading, chanting, and remembering. The great examples 
of most sensitive devotees who are actually parshadas, eternal <coughs> associates. And by their mercy, by their kripa, including Guru Kripa, Sadaka can go through these different stages, stages of sadhana, which is the limit Ashakti, then come intermediate stage Bhava, and finally reach the Prema. From where? By the mercy of Guru Manjari, for the mercy of all beautiful Manjaris, he can develop his spiritual life in different, different stages of Prema. This is the reason, my understanding is, this is the reason why very often Gurudev, Prabhupada and all Acharyas are saying slowly, slowly, but surely. Because this is the fastest way. <laughs> if we try to jump, we will break our leg. Slowly, but surely. Properly understanding, properly feeling, and properly practicing what they are advising us. Radhika. <clears throat> For this reason, this Vila Pakusumanjali is especially relishable for practitioners of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. The best means to attain constant remembrance and love of Radharani Dhruvanu Smriti is to hear, chant, and remember this. Dade, <laughs> like Raghunath says, important importance of listening, chanting, and remembering Vilapa Kusumanjali now is coming like conclusion. And Baba is saying, especially relishable for sadakas of Gaudiya Vaishnava. This is the secret meaning, what does, how to relish even in sadhana or sadaka body, how to relish these beautiful verses, this beautiful Manjari Bhava, Manjari Seva. How to make a sadhana alive. Vivid. Even if we didn't attain direct service. Sadhana has to be always full of eagerness. This kind of eagerness is helping meditation and meditation helps developing devotional service, bhakti. Eagerness is a, how to say, eagerness is a quality which help sadaka, practitioner, aspirant to relish his sadhana. Without eagerness, sadhana is very, very dry and boring. And we can see from the examples of Goswamis, Alcharyas, 
actually that on the stage of sadaka sadhana they hankering for this kind of relishing also relishing in the sadaka body seva sadaka rupena first seva sadaka rupena and they relish their meditation their smarana shravana kirtana smarana even in this stage of sadhana it was not boring frustrating for them so this is they are our torchlights they enjoy the sadhana yes guru but not for themselves yeah and they want to do more and more they are never satisfied what they are doing. this is the real example <laughs> is gopina shama priya ras lila they are the example 24 7 the mind is moving how much I can do for others? In Swarupa Vesh, Shiraguna Dasa prays, Ai Shashi Mukhi, O Moon Faced Girl, after you finished your intense amorous battle, with the Lord of your life, you dropped your beloved waist belts. And when you came out of the Kunja, you realized, I don't have them on anymore. Will you, will you Send me back <coughs> to Kunja with a hint to get them for you. Why are these waist bells so dear to Swamini? Because they make Mohana very happy. Whatever makes Mohana happy is very dear to Radharani. I'm <coughs> Whatever makes Mohana happy is very dear to Radharani. She doesn't care about these things for her own sake. <laughs> Chaitanya Charitamrita Adilila 4. The Gopikas know the desires on Krishna's mind 
and they render their service expertly for the happiness of their beloved. Amongst the gopis, Radhika is the greatest. Her beauty, qualities, fortune, and love are all supreme. Swamini needs the waist bells to increase Mohana's bliss at the time of dancing. and to increase his erotic madness at the time of their amorous pastimes. That's why these sweet waist bells are so dear to Swamini. Amorous pastimes have been performed long ago and the Yuga Lakishore are now sitting on a jeweled throne surrounded by their sakis. For Radha and Mohana's pleasure, the sakis begin to dance and sing sweetly before their throne, playing so many musical instruments. Sometimes they also play just instrumental music without singing. Jay Kashur, Jamdar Kishore, or one other. How sweetly and lusciously the drums play. How sweetly the cymbals chime in time. How sweet are their gestures and their dancing steps. How sweetly they enjoy Rasika pastimes. The poet Vidyapati sings. How sweetly they sing their Rasika songs. Now, the Sakis encourage Radhika to get up and join them. While Mohana remains seated and plays his flute. The playful gopis compose Rasika Ragas and the spring becomes the husband of the Ragini, female musical note, which is attached to Rati, the wife of Cupid. Different kinds of venas and stringed instruments like the Ravava and Mahati are played, while Radha Raman plays his Murali flute. While dancing, Swamini notices that she doesn't have her sash 
on anymore because she doesn't hear its bells jingling anymore. She then remembers that she left it behind in the kunja, forgetting to put it on again out of loving ecstasy. And with her eyes, she gives a hint to Tulasi to fetch it. Tulasi goes back to the Kunja where Swamini left the sash of bells behind. And she sees it lying there keeping quiet out of pride, feeling offended because it was abandoned. Those who belong to Radharani have such an intense feeling of possessiveness. Yeah. Tulasi loves everything that belongs to Swamini and she tells the belt, you are mine. How can I tolerate it when you reject me? Then Tulasi suits the chain's peak by saying, Ore, Swamini has forgotten you because she was intoxicated by an intense erotic battle. You are so dear to her. Do you think that she abandoned you on purpose? Tulasi hmm. So there is a beautiful example how things how waste bell which is coming in the contact with Mahabhava becomes Mahabhava Whatever comes in the ocean of Mahabhava becomes Mahabhava. Yeah. And Waste Bell, who is so long around Radhika's waist, helping in exchange of love with her lover is actually also full of Mahabhava. And Tulasi is talking to this vase bell because she knows that vase bell is full of emotions of her beloved Swamini. And this vase bell is not ordinary thing. dead thing. This vase belt, full of Mahabhava, helps in exchange of loving emotions between Yugala Kishore. So Tulasi feels the pain of vase belt, which is abandoned. So this is the secret of love. Tulasi everywhere, in everyone and everything can see Radhika and feel 
radical emotions. And this is very nice example. How she is talking with the waist belt. which is embodiment, became embodiment of Mahabal. Tulasi affectionately holds the waist bells to her chest and kisses them, thus soothing their peak and making them sweetly jingle again. Then this is description, Radhe. This is description. How Tulasi takes with soft, tender hands this beautiful vase bell and kisses it and puts on her chest. <coughs> this is the subject. Only this description is enough for deep smarana rade then she secretly brings it into the assembly of dancing sakis that surround Radhika and Mohana. Swamini is called Shashimuki here. She whose face resembles the moon with spots on his surface. When Tulasi returns to the assembly, she sees that Swamini's face is grey out of sorrow over her waist belts. Therefore, Shiragunata addresses Swamini here as Shashimuki. She, whose face resembles a stained moon. Swamini cannot stop dancing. And at the same time, none of the Sakis should notice that Tulasi is putting the belt back on her waist. Everyone's gaze is fixed at Radhika. What to do now? The practicing devotees should remember the expertise in service of the Nitya Siddha Kinkaris very well. Rade. So this is confirmation, actually how to follow Nitya Siddha Kinkaris. Because only through them 
sadaka can learn how to expertly serve. And for this, we need strong relationship with these kinkaris, with our Guru Manjari. Because through this relationship, infusion of their emotions from their hearts will come in the sadhaka's heart and in their association, sadhaka will slowly learn how to expertly serve beloved Swamini. And this is the path of Raga Sadhana Bhakti. True Bhajana, true Smarana, with deep connection with Nitya, Siddha, Kinkaris, and their feelings. Maduri al microfono chiuso. Yeah. 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 Um, and I hope Gurudev can can help us in this. Guranga Sundar was just beautifully describing when um, everything which comes in touch with Swamini becomes Mahabhav <coughs> itself, like the sash of bells is full of emotions, and Tulsi starts a relationship with that, right? And starts talking, and she is infused also by the Sash of Bells. The Sash of Bells is in peak, and Tulsi has to soothe her. There's another beautiful example given also. At one time, Radharani is taking a bath, and she comes out, and the manjaris put her on her bed, and Tulsi takes a cloth and starts to. Wants, wants to like dry her, the wetness, the drops on her body. And then she spots that the drops on, on Swamini's body have goosebumps. They're full of Mahabhav as well. And Tulsi looks with big eyes and she says, oh, what should I do now? I cannot wipe them off. You know, they're in ecstasy. But then she feels, no, no, don't you worry. You also will become kinkaris. Swamini will also make you kinkaris. So then I was feeling, Gurudev, that when we talk about from going from sadhana bhakti to bhava bhakti, that in our smaran, we have to really touch, feel, smell her. Yeah. Otherwise, our bhava bhakti cannot grow. Right, Gurudev? Can you share how we should practice more on this through that, that our feelings develop in our smara for Radharani and our manjari bhav increases? Actually, one thing Gauranga Sundar is telling that we have to follow our Guru Kinkiri. This and Rati Manjari, this is most important. Because they are in the Bhava Bhakti and Prema Bhakti. 
and we are in sadhana bhakti. Still, this sadhana bhakti is going on. To come to the bhav bhakti, we need the association of bhav bhakti. And when we see their bhav, the samni which belt you would say, this belt from the Somni, they touch and they become so much in ecstasy, they don't know what to do. They start kissing, they start hugging, they forget to bring that. They are in ecstasy of a bhava bhakti, by touch, by smell, Okay. By feeling. So what they say, what is the Braj, what is Vrindavan Mahima? Leela Madhuri, <coughs> Ras Madhuri, Prem Madhuri, Venu Madhuri. These are all things. When Venu Madhuri, what is Venu Madhuri? Is a Madhuri of listening, what now I want to listen something what is not general subject. Means feeling is what I want to feel something else. And this bhava bhakti is only the grace of manjari who is living in bhava bhakti, they can give. You are right. This all Baba's quotations is not a verse, is a vani. They say the realized and feeling is writing there. So only we have to flow that our Guru Manjari and Rati Manjari is teaching this and live in that how and explain today I'm. Thank you. Only in mood of listening. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. Um, the practicing devotees should remember the expertise in service of the Nitya Siddha Kinkaris very well. Yeah. While Srimati dances, her veil falls off. So the Kinkari goes up to her to put her veil straight and at the same time puts the waist bells back on her waist in an unseen way. Now, Swamini's sweet dancing is once more accompanied by the jingling of her waist belts. How happy Swamini is. Tulasi's bliss knows no bounds, knowing her service was a success. Sweetheart. Suddenly, Radhe, Radhe. to us his bliss knows no bounds, knowing her service was a success. Third reason 
why Krishna wanted to appear like a Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is to relish, to be made servant of Radhika, to yeah. feel this kind of bliss. <laughs> Because this kind of bliss of Manjari Seva doesn't have any bounds and this is the most successful, topmost Seva, which even Krishna is hankering. And he is saying in Chaitanya Charitamrita, nobody calls me Radha Sevika. And this is my inner core desire of my heart. I want this experience. I want to relish this. This kind of bliss is unknown to me. And upon that, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu relished this Manjari Bhav and very gracefully he gave to others this practice, this Bhava, which brings them to the Radhika's lotus feet. Sri Radhi. 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 Beautiful, beautiful. Tulas is bliss, knows no bounds, knowing her service was a success. Yeah. Suddenly, the vision ends, and Shiragunata prays, O Vilasini, who is proud of her love, when you forget your sweet, beloved belt, After having an intense erotic fight with the Lord of your life, you look for it, but you cannot find it. Oh, Shiradi, will you give me a hint to look for it? and quickly bring it back to you. O moon-faced goddess, just to make you happy, I will always follow your orders. The end of verse 94. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone want to say something? That is ten fifteen minutes. I just thought of Sudasina Maharaj when we were with him, and he said that the remembrance mm -hmm. 
the remembrance is the life force of the mind. I just was remembering this because it's all about remembrance. So remembrance means also connect. So it depends what we are remembering, so we are connecting. So the perfection of remembrance is to remember all the all with the playtimes of Radha Mohan. This is what I feel here. We should never, nothing else remember, only this. Our mind should, should get so empty from anything, 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 just to throw it out and to remember all with the playtimes of Radha Mohan. Whatever is connected to it. And that is, that makes us like protected. If we have too much garbage in the mind because of, we are bombarded every day with so many different uh, informations, all our remembrance goes also away and our, our meditation is not like like a like an unbroken stream, it will break. So if we always remember Vilab Kujumanchali, if we always remember Radha Rasa Sudanidi all the time, nothing else than this, then we can our our mind really gets that force and our mind goes into that one pointedness, like um like our Gorasunda explained, this Tuva Anusmriti means that one pointedness, that it's only directed on one point, and that's Radha Mohan. So, this is actually the goal of life. That's what I feel, and that's what I want to share. So, to be an unbroken, like the stream should be unbroken, that means the remembrance should also be unbroken. Always, always. <laughs> Remember these past times and never forget them. Rade, rade.